In this video, we want to give the definition of a limit and try and make sense of what it means. When I write the limit as x approaches a of a function f of x is equal to l, what you should think that means intuitively is that as x gets really close to a, then your function is going to get really close to l. Or more precisely, your function gets arbitrarily close to l, as close as you want, for values of x that are sufficiently close to a. Let's make sense of this with an example. Consider the function f of x is equal to x plus 2. Now, we want to maybe perhaps think about uh, a limit. So let's, let's pick a limit like the limit as x approaches 3 of, of your function, of your function. So this is asking, what is your function approaching as x approaches 3? Or more precisely, what value is your function getting arbitrarily close to as x gets closer and closer and closer to 3? And you might just look at this and be like, well, if you pick values really close to 3, you're going to get things really close to 5. Maybe you could have guessed that. But let's go through how you could reason through this a little bit more precisely. One thing you might do is make a table. You might make a table of x values and the corresponding outputs, the corresponding x plus 2s. So these are my, my f of x values. If you plug in something really close to 3, like 2.9, notice what happens. You would get out 2.9 plus 2 is 4.9. Sure enough, that's pretty close to 5. But, but the statement's actually a little bit more um, um, precise. It's saying that you can get as close to 5 as you want. So, so maybe you want to be even closer to 5. Maybe you want to be like, like at 4.9999, right? Like, like how can you get this close to 5? Well, you just have to begin with something like 2.9999. Notice if you begin with something really close to 3, you get out something really, really close to 5. And you can get out values as close to 5 as you want. You can do it on the other side too. You can do things a little bit bigger than 3. If you plug in something like 3.01, you would get out something like 5.01. So still, as you get close to 3, you get out values close to 5. You can get as close to 5 as you want, as long as you pick values really close to 3. You can also think about this graphically. So we can graph this function x plus 2. So it'll begin here at 2, and it'll go up with a, a slope of 1. So it looks something like this. Now what is it saying? This is saying that my x is approaching 3. So, so let's look what happens as my x comes closer and closer to 3. As x comes closer and closer to 3, the values on this function, the values on this function are getting closer and closer to 1, 2, 3, 4. Ah, I must have drawn this off. Gets closer and closer to 5. So as I get closer and closer to 3, the values of my function are getting closer and closer to 5. Now, you might just think, this is kind of silly. I mean, don't you just figure out what this is by plugging 3 into it? I mean, is, isn't this just the same thing as f at 3? And it's true, in this example it is. If you plug in 3, you just get out 5. But that doesn't have to be the case. To, to make this clear, let me, let me show you another example. Let's consider a slightly different function, we'll call it g of x, and let's define this function as a piecewise function. g of x will be the same as f of x, it'll just be x plus 2 whenever my x value that I'm plugging in is not equal to 3. But when my x value is equal to 3, let's have it instead spit out 0. So what does g of x look like? g of x looks identical to f of x, except at 3, there's going to be a hole. 
F3, when you plug in 3, you don't get out 5. You don't plug it in here. When you plug in 3, you get out G of 3, you get out 0. So at 3, you get 0. 0. So, so if, you, if you looked at, at this table for G of X, for G of X, G of X, it would give you all the same values, but at 3, it would give you 0. Now, now the question is, what is the limit as x approaches 3 for g of x? And if you were just looking at this table, you might be like, well, if my function, if x goes to 3, I'm at 3, I'm going to get out 0. But no, 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 that wasn't the definition of limit. You don't just plug 3 in. The definition limit says what happens when your x is sufficiently close to a, not at a. Not, ha not when you plug in a, but when you're close to a. And, and whenever you plug in values close to 3, you're getting out values close to 5. The limit's not asking what happens at a. This is not asking, it's not in general asking what is f at a. It could be different. It's asking what happens when you're close to a. So, so this line, whenever you're close to 3, you're going to get out things that are really close to your 5, even though at 3, you're far off. At 3, you drop down. So that's a common point of confusion. The limit's not saying what happens at A. It's asking what happens as you approach A. At that point, things can go crazy. It can be something totally different. But you don't need to worry about that point. All you need to do is worry about what happens when you're close by. We'll examine this idea a little bit further in the next video.